Let's read our text scripture today. Let's read our text scripture. Under the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and their conscience are defiled. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now, uh, God gave me this scripture about four or five years ago with my wife while I was in Spain. We were in Spain on holiday. And we've gone to, because we've got, a, we've got a couple in Spain, we've got a church in Barcelona, Jim and Claire Drury, who knows them? They're going to be here in August and we, we're building and pioneering and God is touching people in Spain. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? Y gloria a Dios, necesita aprender un poco de español. How many want to learn a bit of Spanish? Well, you come with us to Spain and you learn Spanish, I like Spanish, you preach in Spanish, it's really good. It's like Italian. Tu sentir como es ah, diferente, es, es, tiene pasión, tiene fuerza. ¿Y cómo se dice? Es algo raro, especial, no me sé. But it's good. I like Spanish. And, you know, we were in this Christian bookshop. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. How many of you know when the Holy Spirit speaks, you should listen? I mean, a lot of people say, well, how do you know God's speaking to you? Does he speak with a loud voice, a Spanish, a Spanish voice or a Cockney voice? You know, I've not heard the audible voice of God. And maybe a couple of times I th- I, I, I've heard something. It, it, it felt like audible. Very few people have. Most of you, need, everybody put your hand on and say, my spirit will hear. You see, sometimes your spirit, man, needs to know before your, before your mind. Romans 8, 14 says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if, if you're in a right, everybody say right relationship to Father, right relationship to the Holy Spirit and Jesus, which is Colossians, the book of Colossians is the supremacy of Christ. Everybody say the supremacy of Christ. And in Colossians, it says he is the head of the church. So if you're in a right relationship, you are then in the place of Galatians 4, 6, Abba, Father. Which means your spirit cries, Abba, Father. Which means you can hear God. So he says, I can't hear God. Yes, you can. If you be quiet, you will hear him. It's no good having a prayer meeting if you pray all the time and you don't listen. Sometimes you need to stop. Sometimes you need to just listen quietly. And he will speak and bring an impression into your spirit. And when that happens, you should always keep a pen and paper because sometimes that happens in the night. I know when God has spoken to me. Anybody else? Who would like to hear God more accurately out of a pure heart in 2016? Then this message is going to help you to hear God. Because, you know, at any one point in time, you can have different voices. You can have a human spirit. You can have a religious spirit. You can have the Holy Spirit. Worst of all, you can have a demonic spirit. I know what a demonic spirit sounds like. I've had that. Anybody else? And, uh, but I want to hear, if I say the Holy Spirit speaking to my spirit so I can hear God's heart. Now, the key to that is a pure heart. Whenever the heart gets defiled, whenever the heart gets dirty, you don't hear God. Can anyone just give me a wave and agree with me? And so we need to hear God. I know when I've heard God. I remember when I heard God, I went to Argentina uh, 24 years ago. 24 years ago in the city of Cordoba. I'd been praying for years to get married. I'd tried everything. I bought brute. Uh, 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 to smell cute. I mean, I tell you what, I, I made sure I had fresh breath. I prayed. I fasted I, for, for years. It's true. I had brute, brute to make me smell cute. And uh, I tell you what, folks, I went around churches all around the world preaching, preaching. And all the pastors would say to me, they would say, have you seen our Doris on the piano? And I'd look at Doris on the piano. She was wonderful, Doris playing on the piano. And, and the pastor would say, our oh, Doris, she loves evangelists. And I'd say, that's wonderful. But I knew in my spirit, Doris wasn't for me. I go to another church and it would be, uh, what about our, our June over there on the keyboards? And uh, my, my good friend over there who's known me for many, many years, Jim. You remember Jim? Jim, I was a hot catch, wasn't I? They were trying to marry me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not today. Not today. Everybody say, not today. Not a hot catch today. But you know why I'm not a hot, hot catch today? Because I've been caught. Oh, praise God. Hey, you know, I, I got my catch. Hey, you know, I'm not available. I'm out of bounds. Glory be to Jesus. What a wonderful place to be at. How many of you are still single? Lift your hands. Lift your hands, all the single. Make a decision this year. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I know it's not that easy. Very important to get, the, to get God's will. Amen. But I know when I met Karina, I'll tell you what. Do you know what her name means? It means pure heart. I didn't know that in Spanish. When I met her, of course she's very beautiful. We put up a profile picture this week. Uh, every time my wife does, I'm almost like, well, darling, can you, can you do Photoshop on me before you do? <laughs> because here's what happens, Seba. Comments cuts keep coming in from people who don't know me very well. Is that your daughter? I'm like, 
you know, I've got like, oh God, t- help me to keep a pure heart here. Some of them I want to delete the comments and say, no, it's my wife, you silly. <laughs> Have you know, there comes a time you've got to give up Gillette. Who knows, Gillette is the best a man can get, but there's a time to go gracefully grey. Can I get an amen? And she puts up a lovely picture there and she looks like, a, I don't know why, she's, she looks like 25. And I'm looking a little older. And I don't like comments. Is that your daughter? No, it's not my daughter. <laughs> Praise be unto God. Amen. But I knew when I, when I saw her heart in worship, my heart leapt within me and I said, that's my wife. Now, I had a lot to overcome. One, I didn't speak Spanish. The only Spanish I knew was la cucaracha, la cucaracha. <laughs> and two was I, I had no, no knowledge of, of what to, how to approach a young lady. Who knows this? But I had heard God. How did I hear God? A pure heart. Because when I was saved at 19 years of age until 32, I prayed every day, Lord, keep me away from, uh, you know, extraterrestrial relationships. Who knows what the extraterrestrial relationships are? You know, it's what they do in America. It's called dating, Seba. Everybody say, dating is from the devil. And today there's Christian agencies and sites. You know, you get on and find out if you're compatible. Give it a miss. Who can say, let me say, give it a miss. Listen, the God who flung a billion stars into space, he's able to get your dial. He's able to get your number in his time. And I've seen so many people be unfruitful in that, in that area because they're striving. Have you know the Bible says the servant of the Lord must not? Hands up all the, all the single people saying, I hate this stuff when he does this. Hallelujah. Okay, now listen, lift up your hands, everybody, single or married, lift up your hands and say, Father, a pure heart will bless my marriage. A pure heart will bless me while I'm single. A pure heart will bless me if I've been divorced. A pure heart will keep me in the right place of hearing God. But when I knew that I knew that I knew that I'd heard God, I could act on the word of God. And on Luke 1.37, it says, for with, for with God, nothing should be impossible. I learned Spanish. Now, it's a pretty rough Spanish. There's a lot of people who don't really understand my Spanish, but I've got no problem with it. Can I get an amen? And Seba, Sebastian, I've preached to vast crowds, haven't I? Crowds of up to 3,000, and I'm preaching in Spanish. Lord have mercy. I don't know what they're hearing. I wave my arms around, and I go, Gloria a Dios, hallelujah, 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 Gloria a Dios, hallelujah. But I'll tell you what, when I make the altar call, they come running to Christ. <laughs> Amen. And I was in Spain, coming back to the story in Spain. I mean, one time I preached in Spain in this very posh, fancy church. And I was really struggling with my Spanish. But loads of people got saved and healed and delivered. And a woman came up very posh in Spanish. And she said, to, and she, in good English, she spoke English as well. She said, sir, I want to tell you. She should, oh, sorry, standing on your toes. Though. We can do that when you're married. Sorry, Don. Uh, uh, she said to me, she said, I want to tell you, your Spanish is atrocious. Oh, you, got, you, got, you got any other further encouragement? She said, she said, you know what? I've never heard so many grammatic, grammatical mistakes in, in, all, in all my life. I wanted to say to her, listen, I wasn't talking to you anyway. I, <laughs> but I thought, hear her out, hear her out. I, wasn't, I wanted to say, I wasn't talking to you anyway. But I thought, no, be gracious, pure heart, you know, let her, let her finish. And then she said, she went on and she said, but you know what? She said, I've never, ever seen so many people responding to God. And I thought, well, great, then my rough Spanish works. <laughs> now, hear God. Let's go back to uh, Titus 1.15. Go back to Titus 1.15. Go back to the story. Everybody say, under the pure, all things are pure. But unto those that are defiled. Stop at the word defiled. You know, uh, when things are defiled, they become putrid. You know, when I was a, when I was a, a, a fully qualified French chef running an Italian restaurant, and I had a career all mapped out to become a master chef. Very important levels of hygiene, stocks, sauces, and food. Because if something becomes putrefied because flies got into it or disease got into it, you're dealing with people's lives. Now, everybody wave at me and watch it on the broadcast and say, what's defiled isn't suitable for consumption and certainly isn't suitable for God. You know, there's, a, there's all kinds of food poisoning you can get in the food industry. Uh, we've, got, we've got two chefs in here. Where, 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 where's, uh, where's Jenna? Oh, she's there. We've got, we got two chefs in here. This is very important. You could get botulism. You could get staphylococci. You could get common food poisoning, which I can't remember what it's called, but what's it called, Jenna? Staphylococci. 
something like that. Anyway, from common food poisoning, the, 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 the Hebrew and the, what's it called? E. coli. There you go. Thank you. There's, there's a fella who reads all his books. E. coli. That'll do. E. coli. Yes. Yes. Amen. You see? Because it's, it's what, what is it? It's defiled. Now, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, quickly, the Bible says, if you become defiled as a Christian, let me say, as a Christian, something happens in you that starts to grow inside you, and then it springs up inside you. It's called a root. Everybody say a root. A shoot in the root, and the shoot in the root grows up inside you, and you become defiled and bitter, and it springs up, and it guess what it does? It defiles many. One of the great things that I've seen over years of ministry are defiled Christians, defiled ministries, defiled pulpits, defiled men, defiled women, people who are defiled. They were not defiled. One time they were pure. Everybody wave at me. One time they were pure, but they got defiled along the journey, along the process. And now that defilement, Sebastian, is springing up inside them and, and they're, they're, everything they touch is being defiled. They, they, they have, a, they have a, a, a harsh, arbitrary spirit to others. They are legalistic. They are bitter. They are twisted. They are critical. C- can anybody just identify with this? They go from church to church, place to place. Now, everybody who's a Christian, lift your hand up and watch it on the broadcast. At some stage, you've been hurt or you will be hurt. But who knows how you deal with hurt? Everybody say, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. Now, hands up all those who've had things in their Christian journey already, even if you're a young Christian, that could defile you, could make you bitter. Lift your hand up. Well, it's wonderful to see we're all honest here today. I think that was good enough to take my jacket off. Now, what do you do with that? Turn to a neighbor and say, what do you do with that? You see, you know what? If you don't process it right, that shoot goes into the root. Now, years ago, I did a series called Shoots and Roots. Who remembers that? Only four or five people were here. I did that series on shoots and roots because I believe this. If there's a shoot in the root, it will spring up again. So the, meaning, the root meaning of the word radical means to cut to the root. Everybody say cut to the root. So God has to cut to the root in our life of anything that could turn us into defilement. Touch a neighbor and say, he's speaking to you, not me. Some of you say, why does he do that? For obvious reasons, to keep an audience tracking. Because normally this is the time, Sebastian, where people think, right, I'll get on my iPhone and I'll send a message to my girlfriend. And you shouldn't be doing that anyway, because if you're dating, you're in the wrong place. You should have be destiny. It's, you're going to be your destiny marriage partner. Amen. And so I want you to concentrate. Everybody say concentrate. Take out a pen. Take out a paper and learn. Everybody say defilement is dangerous. Now put your hand on your heart and say pure heart. Pure heart. Pure heart. Now in, in the book of Proverbs 4.23, one of my favorite, favorite verses, the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Now, the word keep in the King James is guard. Touch a neighbor and give him a high five. Say, guard your heart, son. Guard your heart, daughter. Guard your heart. Because you know what? As a pastor, I've seen more people destroyed through defilement and offense Listen to me, more people, and I've seen it even in this ministry, destroyed through defilement and offense than immorality, stealing, taking drugs, sniffing dope again, going back to marijuana, or, 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 or sniffing up uh, cocaine and heroin and drinking too much coffee. Can I hear an amen? Offended. The Bible says we've no right to be offended. Now you're saying, well, that's okay for him to preach that. I bet he's, I've been offended. Folks, I've been offended. Folks, I've got it wrong. Folks, I've allowed my heart to become embittered. I've allowed wrong judgments to come in. I'll be the first to say that. I've had to repent to my wife and family many, many times. You know, I I often pray and say, Lord, make me more like my wife. I never hear her praying, Lord, make me more like my husband. (laughs) I'm just being honest. How many men are kind of honest in here? You know, I'm not trying to purport to be anything. I'm not. Often I've said, God, why would you call me? Get someone else to do it. I've had enough of this. People criticizing you, people stabbing you in the back. I'm thinking of writing a new book called I Was Butchered, but I'm still breathing. 
I'm thinking of getting a new name for the ministry, Tomahawk Ministries. How, you know, how many tomahawks you had in the back? I'll have a tomahawk. Now, how many of you know what I'm talking about? So there's more room for offense when you're in the ministry than out of the ministry. But every one of you just lift your hands and wave and say, we're all in the ministry. We're all in it together. You know, it shouldn't be that a pastor and his wife are put on a pedestal. If you do that, we fall a long way. And I'm not trying to say anything that I'm not or we're not, but I'm trying to get the truth of the scripture over here as we're seeking a new year. It's out of the heart. Out of the heart flows adultery. Out of the heart flows murder. Out of the heart flows hatred. Out of the heart flows bitterness. Out of the heart flows a gossiping heart. And you know, the whole time you've got to say, God, my heart, my heart, make my heart clean. Come on, lift your hands around about now and pray with me and say, Father, the pastor's right. I need to have a clean heart, a pure heart, an undivided heart, a loyal heart. I need to get free of offenses I might have had previously. I need forgiveness to flow in me and forgiveness to flow in others. And I do need a release. I do not want shoots in the root to grow up in me and it'll defile my marriage, defile my money, defile the ministry. It's like putrid flies in the sauce. Nobody would want to eat it. And give the Lord a hand. And say, there's help today. There's help. Now, Let's go back to Titus chapter 1, verse 15. You see, one of the things I believe is so important from the pulpit is to preach the word. It says that in Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, to preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. You won't grow with my opinions, but you'll grow with, with, with preaching the word, understanding the word, applying the word. This is our primary source of direction, folks, the word of God. The Word of God. You see, you know, opinions and truisms are not really biblical. Now, I was saying this earlier. You know, today there's such an emphasis in ministry about being politically correct. I say put political correctness in the bin. I am not politically correct, but I am deeply, deeply concerned about being biblically correct. Can I get an amen? And so you're not going to get political correctness down here. And why do I say that? Because Christians can easily be deceived. I want you to know we make sure our ministry is under authority from Dr. Dyson and other ministries around the world so that I'm not a, a, a loose cannon. And I listen to people that are much more mature and wise than me, people like Derek Prince. Who knows what I'm talking about? Derek Prince says today, in the last days, one of the greatest things that's going to happen in the Christian world will be deception. Everybody say deception. And in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, Jesus said, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world valley. And then the end will come. But before the end comes, he says, there'll be deceivers. There'll be false Christ. People will be lovers of themselves. They'll be boastful. They'll be proud. They'll be arrogant. They'll be haughty. Who knows that pride comes before a fall? You know, pride is a terrible thing. It's like bad breath. You don't know you got it. Everybody else does. Can I get an amen? Who likes my preaching? That's well, all you're getting today. Now, so what, 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 have we got to, what have we got to be careful with here? The heart. The heart. That's why Isaiah 58, 5 and 6 is, is the key to January. Give the month of January to fasting and prayer. Isaiah 58, 5 and 6. Why? Because if you do that, God will deal with your... You see, you start off a fast with your shopping list. I want a, I want a new car. I, I want a, a clean house. I want a million pounds. I want to win the lottery. I want a perfect body with no flabby bits. I want to be younger. And then the Lord just goes... <laughs> doesn't he? And then you put away your shopping list and you get on your knees and say, God, give me a right heart. You know, years ago, I started writing a song. I never finished it. Love God, love each other. Love God, love each other. Love God, love each other. That's what Jesus taught us to do. Have a go with me. Come on. Love God, Love each other, love God, love each other. That's what Jesus taught us to do. And in Matthew chapter 22, going quickly, verses 36 to 40, I'll come back to that, leave that there. That is the great commandment of Christianity. Everybody say, love God and love each other. 
love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said on this, hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, Jesus said, you can put away the entire law of the Old Testament. We've been in Israel. We love the Jewish nation. We love the Jewish people. I've been at the Wailing Wall as a Gentile with my head covered and I've been praying. Because they've not understood. You can hang all the law and the prophets in Jesus. It's done. It's done. Everybody say it's on the house. Happy hour, on the hour, every hour, free. See, law and religion puts you into legalism and bondage. If I do this, I get that. If I do this, I get that. That, That's not what God's saying in this message. He's saying, get your heart right. Get your heart right. You get your heart right, your heart will love God. And if you love God, you'll love one another. And I want more of that in my life. Why? Because there's some pretty evil stuff going on right now. Can I get an amen? And the Bible says in Isaiah, there's four things that happen in a godly fast. Loose bands of wickedness, undo heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, break every yoke. How many of you would agree with me that there are things in your life that God has to destroy and break? For some of us, it may be gluttony. For some of us, it may be that loose tongue. For some, it might be lust. How many of you understand that when you come to Christ, there's still a lot of work to be done? You know, the, 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 the diamonds that, 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 are, that are found deep, deep, deep into the earth. I've been to Kimberley, South Africa. You know, they go two miles down, Donna, two miles down to get diamonds out of the earth. Men are so greedy for, for what they can make from diamonds. But do you know that when they cut a diamond, 65% is cut away? I want you to touch a neighbor and say, God's got to cut probably 65% of you away. That's called roots and shoots. John 12, 24 says, come on, say it with me. Unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Everybody wave at me at this point. Just wave at me and say, you know what? There's got to be some dying. See, you know, there's far too much preaching, which is new age psychology and psychiatry about you're you're, you're wonderful. You're amazing. You're just you're just no, you're not. You're not amazing. He's amazing. All right. You can only be amazing when you deal with the root of repentance. There's far too much preaching today. It's, it's actually new age psychology, psychiatry. It's not, even, it's not even biblical. Now I'm not trying to be hard. All I'm trying to say is deal with the root and then you deal with the issue. Lift up your hand and say, yes, I am amazing if I repent and build my life in Christ. Which means God has to destroy roots, shoots, and impurity that can quickly get in. How does it come in? Let's go through the obvious. Too much telly. Too much eating. Too much sleeping. Even things that might be good. Even too much of the gym. Oh, you don't get a body like this by accident. I mean, every day I exercise. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then the other eyelid. I mean, come on. Can I hear an amen? Touch your neighbor and say, he was talking to you, not me. No, he was talking to you. Now listen to me. Listen, listen. If you allow your heart to be poisoned, to be polluted, to be defiled, these are the two things that happen. Your mind and your conscience starts to get defiled. That's a dangerous place, people. Why? Because when the mind becomes poisoned and the conscience becomes darkened, you're in a massive problem. You really are in a bad place because then God can't speak to you. Because your mind, and, and, in, and Leviticus 19.19, 19, quickly put that up, 19.19. 19. I'm going quickly, Jesus is coming soon. However you say, thank God, we're getting a biblically correct message today. You know, I, I want to say to folks, listen, have a bit of discernment. Who knows there are nine gifts of the Spirit? One of them is discernment. Sometimes you might have to turn off Christian TV. Honestly, some of the stuff that comes out isn't good to listen to. I'm just telling you the God's honest truth. I'm not trying to you say, well, it's easy for him to say that. He's not famous. He's not on telly. He doesn't have a private jet. No, I don't. And you know what? I'm glad I don't. If that keeps me pure and that keeps me faithful to my wife and faithful to the call, then I thank God. Because I tell you what, there's an awful lot of ministry today that is defiled. And so how do you know? I know. I know. You've got to ask yourself the question. I was watching one particular uh, minister, you know, a hundred million dollars a year, private jet, 
you know, all, 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 all the trappings. What would that do to your heart if you were not pure? Just wave at me and say, that's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because often with the heart goes the treasure. And you know what goes with it? Everybody say three things. Money, power, and sex. Everybody say money, power, and sex. It's called a megalomaniac spirit. It means domination. It's Jezebelic control. And everywhere you find the lust of money, everybody said the lust of money, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh, and personal idolatry, when they become a legend in their own mind, the next spirit is personal idolatry, which is immorality. See, in Leviticus 19.19, 19, it says, look, don't be careful what you mix with. Don't let your livestock breed with another kind. You shall not sow your field with mixed seed, nor shall a garment of mixed linen and wool come upon you. You say, well, that's Old Testament. What's he talking about? Let me apply that into a New Testament context. Whenever we allow the mixture, everybody say the mixture of purity and defilement to get into the mix, I want you to know the lowest common denomination will always, always pull you down. Whoever found that out? So you can't be a Christian for five years and then decide that you're going to go and smoke some marijuana joints. Somebody give me a wave. You can't be a Christian at OCC and say, you know what? Uh, it's, it's, it's just a little thing. God's looking the other way. Just wave at me and say, I don't want to be defiled. Come on, say bad attitudes, bad connections, bad associations, bad books, letters, tapes, got to go. Come on now, I want you to put your hand on your heart, everybody, I'm watching on the broadcast, say 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, defilement has no place in my body. Lord, you've said that i got to keep my temple pure or you could destroy me. Well, you don't often hear that much, but I want you to know when playing sometimes with fire. Sometimes we never hear about sin. That's what I'm talking about, the modern message, which is all about psychiatry and psychology and you know, and you know, and I'm not being harsh, but you know, you're like, hey, you're awesome. Hey, you could be great. Hey, you know what? You know what? You could have a body like mine. You could make twenty million dollars. You know, you could be just amazing. You could be just. A... Everybody say, oh, shut up. Can I get an amen? What is defilement? Just wave at me. What is defilement? Defilement is allowing a mixture to come into your life. I want you to go to Matthew chapter five. I want to show you how to stay free of defilement. And I reckon that's about as much as I can preach today. See, because the Bible says, out of the heart flows what? Adultery. Matthew, uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, it says, the man who looks on the woman with lust has done what? How many men are saying, ouch, at this point, lift your hands? Every man in the congregation. You know, what is that? That's sin in the heart. Now all the women, don't think you're getting away with it. How many of you know, you women, you're guilty as well. Lift your hands as well. Eh, I see it all. All this MTV stuff, I'll tell you what, don't be watching that. That'll defile you. I can't believe it. Is, is it a song or what is it? Or is, is it an orgy? And they're all gyrating and, hey, baby, I love you. Ooh, yeah. It's like, oh, come on. It's like, what? I don't watch it. I, I don't. I, you know what? I don't want to be defiled. People say you're very straight. Yes, I am. I don't, I don't listen to secular radio. I don't listen to secular radio. I know some of you say, well, why not? You know, I mean, I might, I might hear the odd tune, but, you know, I don't want to be defiled. You know, people say, do you, listen to, do you listen to the Christian radio? No, because most of it's junk. Sorry. I don't watch Christian TV. I don't, I don't want to get influenced or defiled. Now, some of you say, well, that's a bit extreme. Aren't there any, isn't there anybody good on there? No, I'm not on there, so it can't be good. That, that, and that should suffice for you. No, uh, listen, I'm not, there are some reputable, if it's Derek Prince, watch it. If it's reputable ministry, but if you know, listen, everybody put your hand here and say, my spirit has discernment. You should know. And if something tells you it's not right, turn it off. I remember my wife and I, we were watching this, this conference about, about marriage. And the woman came on to speak. And I, I sat there and I was uncomfortable. And my wife looked at me and I looked at her and I knew exactly what she was thinking. How many of you are married? Put your hands up. And you know, one look from your wife, it's worth a thousand words. <laughs> and the spirit of discernment kicked in instantly, and I knew what she was thinking. And it wasn't what the woman was saying, Sebastian. It was what she was wearing. And it was like, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Is she trying to stumble everybody? 
Because whoever her husband is clearly doesn't know how to deal with her because of what she was wearing, the way she was wearing it. And I'm thinking, see, I get friend requests on Facebook. I got one this morning from South America, from a certain, you know, sever, from a certain stream. And in the past, I've just let certain things go by that were just kids. But I took one look at the picture. If that's your profile picture, young lady, forget it. If you've got to put a profile picture with a bikini on Facebook to get friends, forget it. Oh, turn to the neighbor beside you go, ooh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. (laughs) Now, I'm not being extreme. I'm just saying your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know, if you're a man and you've got to put your your picture of your ab... (laughs) You know. Look at me. I'm here. I'm, a, I, I'm weird, John Handsome. Who'll be my friend? Something's wrong with you. You know, I see, I mean, when I was in Paraguay, we're going to preach in Paraguay in a few, I, I couldn't believe it. Every, nearly every chick in that church is like, like all selfies. I told him, I said, what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with you people? Selfies. It's like, and it's like, and they're not normal selfies of girls. It's like, nobody stands like this. Ooh, I felt my shoulder go. Like, nobody stands like this and all like this. What, are you deformed? What's going on here? There are three Bs in church. Everybody say three Bs. Behave, believe, and belong. And there are three more bees, which my wife will speak to the women about. But I think, knowing the women, you know exactly the three bees I'm talking about. Don't you? And the men are going, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How many men know what they are? Dave, thank you, Dave. Dave's an honest man. All the other men are going, I don't don't know. I don't know what that is. I I don't know. We had to speak to a young woman in church. We had to say to her, listen, darling, now you're saved. It might be a good thing to clean up yourself a little bit. Why? Because I had young men coming to me say, Pastor. I had one Spanish guy from Madrid. He said, Pastor. I said, what's the mother? He said, said, listen, I can't worship the Lord. I said, why can't you worship the Lord? He said, I can't worship the Lord with that lady sitting in the middle of the row with me. I said, why not? Why can't you worship me? He said, because my eyes are going crazy. I said, why are they going crazy? He said, because when she's worshipping, she's jumping up and down. And I can't, I can't concentrate. So, we say to the girl, listen, you better start to grow in Christ now. Because you're defiling boys. And the woman was extremely offended, wasn't she? Extremely offended, eventually left the church and today is backslidden. Lift up your hands and say, what happened? Root of offense. It was dealt with with love. I said, listen, honey, you got some serious equipment here. I need men to go to heaven, not hell. Can I get an amen? So we need to button some things down. Can I get an amen? And we just need to have some, some sobriety. Can, I, can, I, can somebody help me? Some sobriety, some decency, some honesty. Can, hands up if you're a young woman in here and you, and you believe that God's called you. Hands up if you're a young man, man in here and you believe God's called you. Come on, lift up your hands say purity. Come on, say purity. Say virginity and the spirit of virginity. And at the end of this message and watching on the broad, I'll pray because I know many have been defiled. Too many have been defiled. We need to read what the scriptures, t- the scriptures teach, that if you, if you do those things, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on, everybody say drunkenness, fornication, that means sleeping with someone outside of marriage covenant, lying, cheating, gluttony, drunkenness, excess, rioting. Read the whole Galatians chapter 5, the entire chapter. It says, and these things some of you did. But right now, lift your hands and say, but you know what? The fruit of the Spirit, say the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, long-suffering. Everybody say purity. Now, let's do Matthew 
the whole chapter on the Beatitudes. Can you get me Matthew chapter 5 there? I want to read the Beatitudes. Everybody say the Beatitudes. And this is probably Jesus' greatest sermon. Matthew chapter 5. And uh, Jared, if you could play that fifth concerto now. No, no pressure. In an E minor. Everybody, close your eyes and lift your hands up to heaven and say, And Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up to the mountain. And when he was seated with the disciples, he, he came to him and he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You see, there are eight attitudes that keep your heart pure. Eight. Humility. Kindness. Goodness. Purity. Honesty. Forgiveness. Longevity. Faithfulness. Character. Loyalty. If you become defiled, the devil can take you out of this church. In three, four years, we might find you on the streets. But if you say, Lord, I, I want a pure heart. I want courage. Let me say, say courage, faithfulness. I don't want to look in 10 years at this photograph in here and say, what happened to those people? I see them all the time. The Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So your, everybody say, your enemy is the devil, the world, and your own carnality. And say in Jesus' name, I'm not going to give, give any of those three things to the devil. Now say, I'm going to give my life, my whole life, to Jesus. And watch what happens as we go on. Blessed are they who hunger and they thirst for righteousness. Well, a good season of fasting will fix that. You know what? The very first night we were fasting, I dreamt of a giant steak. It was at least 32 ounces, Seb, from Argentina. It was a lovely piece of beefy de chorizo. And I could see it with garlic and chimichurri all over it. And Valley, I, I was dream I could smell it the first night. And I was about to slice into it and take the first bite. And then I woke up. And I was disgusted. My wife, she dreamt on the first night. She said, yes, I dreamt of squeezing orange juice. I thought, God bless you, darling. I'm not into orange juice. No. No, not at all. I could see steak. There are no vegetarians in Argentina. You know, so one fella said, you know, one night I was so hungry, I dreamt I ate a giant marshmallow, a big fluffy white marshmallow. And I woke up in the morning and my pillow was gone. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. They shall be filled. Now I'm getting to the one I really want to get to. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Are we very merciful? Are we very forgiving? Sometimes bitterness in the heart won't, won't allow that. We've got to keep forgiving. We've got to keep loving. Love God, love each other. Love God, love each other. Now, here we go. Here's the big one. Ready? They shall obtain. Here we go. Verse 8, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Again, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Bendecido es la gente con corazones muy puros, porque bien Dios perfectamente. Pretty rough Spanish, a little bit of Italian in there, but we're getting there. Everybody say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Put your hand on your heart and say, open the eyes of my heart. Purify my heart. Purify my heart. Wash me by the blood. Give me a tender, repentant heart. Radically, Lord, cut to the roots all the sin, all the deceit, all the wrong judgments. You know, you've got to belong somewhere, somebody. You can't live your whole life jumping here, jumping there. Jump. You've got you to you you plug into a local church. You've got to plug into a team. Can I get an amen? You've got to plug into what God's doing. Or you never, you never go anywhere. Who, this is heart surgery. So you're not going to get this on the TV. All you're going to get is buy my book. You're awesome. You're wonderful. Send me $3,000. You're even more awesome. <laughs> yes, for $3,000, I'll send you my book. 
For ten thousand dollars, I'll send you a book and a sticker. Come on now, have some discernment. Stop reading stupid books written by stupid people telling you stupid things and start reading the Bible and start praying and start repenting and start weeping between the porch and the altar. Start going after souls and stop looking selfishly as well with the narcissistic root that the, the, whole, the whole Christian ethos and message is about you because it's not. Touch a neighbor and say he's talking to you. It's not about you. It's about us. It's about a people. You know, there's a form of Christianity today that's so introspective that all it is is looking, looking within, looking within. Isaiah knew what that was. Stop. Look. When you look within, yes, you see the mess. Get healed. Get whole. Look out and touch people. The message of the church is not to have a bunch of sick people coming up for prayer every Sunday. It's to get people healed so that they get others saved. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you. Right now, I want to say to you, I believe that the church is going to be faced with some of the most vehement persecution we've ever known. It's happening while I'm speaking in the Middle East and around the world. And we can't bury our heads in the sand. You know, I watched a video this week. I'm coming to the conclusion. We could just move that aside, Joel, this, this pulpit now. I'm coming to the conclusion. Listen, I watched this video, and it was China or Indonesia or somewhere where there were these little children, and their hands were worshiping God, and tears were streaming down their face. And I've seen that. I've seen that around the world. Philippines. and I've seen that. I've seen that. And I've said, look at that. Pure hearts, they see God. And here we are in London in Hertfordshire and we have some of the finest musicians in the set-up team and some of you have been told year in and year out, please come early, help, and you don't. Please come to church early and you come late. And some of the finest worship and yet you sit there as dead as a brick. You know what that is? Defilement. That, everybody just say defilement. defilement. You've been defiled. Yeah. Titus 1.15, you thought I forgot. I was in the Christian bookshop in Spain. And while I was in there, God spoke so clear to me, sir, but this is what he said. He said, don't touch this stuff. He said, 80 to 90% of all this stuff in here is defiled. I said, Lord, I'm getting out of here. Some people say, I don't even like going into Christian bookshops. You know why? Because there's a bunch of religious stuff in there. Who knows what I'm talking about? How do you know? Everybody say religion is something. Jesus is someone. Religion's a nasty thing. I believe, I believe religion is one of the devil's greatest tools of keep, keep, keeping people contained and bitter and not growing and not receiving true salvation. Can I get an amen, Dominic? But I believe this, I believe this, I believe this. If you get a free heart, you get a clean heart, you get a heart free of defilement, then your mind will not be defiled and your conscience, because when the conscience is gone, it's gone. You know, here I am. In my 57th year, 24 years married to the most beautiful woman in the world, four amazing children, fabulous church. You know what? Big, big or small, I'm not interested anymore. You know, I'm in the twilight years of ministry, but here's my heart. I want to love God with all my heart. I want to love my neighbor as myself. And you know what? I don't care if it's two people. I'll go to the other. I've gone to the ends of the earth for three people, and I'm going to keep going. Because if I can bring more people to Jesus, more people to heaven, then that's what I'm about. If I can have a church that can, they can be on fire so that they're not fighting with each other and you've got to spend half your time as pastors putting out strange fire. They say 25% of a pastor's life is dealt with dealing with conflict. Well, that should change. I don't have time for that stuff. This week we had a woman rail on us in the street. Rail on us in the street, a Christian. You know her as well. I'll tell you who it is afterwards. Railing on us on the street. And, and when we pointed out to her and said, listen, you're the one with the offense, and you're the one who should have gone to your son's wedding. Don't bring me into your world. As I'm not a part of it. Can I get an amen? Don't bring me into your world. Can I get an amen? If you're watching on the broadcast, you know who you are. What is that? Defilement. What is that? Poison mind. What is that? Mixture. What is that? See, there are churches, and I'm going to be straight now. There are churches where the pulpit is defiled. The ministry is defiled. The Christians are defiled. Now you say, you can't say that. Yes, I can and I did. Here's what you've got to determine in your heart. Lord, I don't want to be part of defilement. 
I'm not going to judge them. I'm going to pray for them. But I want a clean heart, a pure heart in 2016 because I don't want any of these roots to grow back again. I believe this about every 18 months, every single church needs a complete deliverance session and a complete freedom session to go through it carefully to get yourself clean and free in Jesus' name. That every bondage, every sickness, every darkness is broken. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Watch it on the broadcast. First, we pray on the broadcast. And then those who slip away, you're welcome to slip away. But I'm going to pray for those who want to stay. Now, lift your hands with me into the presence of God. God bless you, Donna. We love you. God bless you. Those who are going to slip away to work, you're welcome. We always finish about this time. Lift your hands. Praying on the broadcast. I want you to pray this prayer. If you've never invited Christ into your life and you've never received Christ into your life, I want you to give me a wave and say, that's me, that's me, that's me. I need Christ. Because there's no good hearing preaching unless, unless you repent. I'm watching on the broadcast now. I'm praying with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I repent of every sin and all sin. And I ask Jesus Christ to come into my life into my heart, into my home, into my future, into my past. And by the blood of Jesus, wash away every sin, every sin, and make me whole. Now pray this. Say, Lord, 2016, how's my heart going to be? And Father, keep going, Joe, but just take it a little slower. Say, Father, I want a pure heart. Lord, where there's been defilement, And I'm sure there has been. In me, in you, there's been unforgiveness. Lord, help me to have the courage to get on my knees and to forgive and to release. If there's, you know, siblings in families can can build up little resentments. Families can do it. And defilement can come in. And instead of having the type of relationship that you should have, defilement's all over you. You know, we've had, we've had folks in this church have run off and committed adultery. You say, how did that happen? Sebra, it happened because of defilement. You can't, then, then there's no, don't blame the pastors. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming your wife. You better blame yourself. And then nothing you can do can turn it around. And you could lose your eternity. You could lose your soul. And you could go to hell. And that's something I haven't mentioned yet. You think, oh, well, we're all going to heaven. No, you're not. I'm sick of radios and TV shows and press say, oh, he's looking down from heaven. He might be looking down from hell. Listen, if somebody never gave any time to Christ in this life, never repented, never honored Jesus Christ, never once went to church, never once honored the Lord, they're not looking down from heaven, folks. They're in Hades awaiting the great white throne judgment. They are not in heaven. I hear this stuff all the time. This actor died and this one. He's looking down. No, he's not. He's not looking down at all. He's in hell awaiting the final judgment. Oh, I don't hear that in church, Dominic. You know, there's plenty of churches in Watford scared to preach on hell, scared to preach on holiness, scared to preach on marriage, scared to preach because you know what? Well, we'll upset somebody. Well, if I've upset you, fantastic. And you want to fight with me afterwards, you will lose. Because I'm feeling real tough. And you'll get a pasting. So don't even consider it. I like tough talk in this church. I like tough talk because I want tough men. I don't want a bunch of pansies in the church. I want tough men. Somebody say amen. I want people tough, not, not a bunch of pansies, Seba. You know, pansies don't do anything. <laughs> Text, tantrums, and tears. I'm sick of people like that. Can I get an amen? Everybody say, Text, tantrums, and tears. Now, final prayer. Put your hand on your heart and let's do the ministry. Say, Heavenly Father, what do I need? To keep a pure heart. Father God, I'm asking you for the spirit of grace and repentance to rest on me. Like the dancing hand of God to rest on me. Rest on me. That, oh God, I will not allow offense. I will not allow criticism. I will not allow bitterness. I will not allow lust, pornography, lying, cheating, stealing, drunkenness. Uh, debauchery, gluttony, any of these things to grip me con- and control me. Bitterness, peer pressure, lies, insecurity, inferiority, rejection, inferiority. Listen, you're perfect. Stop all that nonsense. Right now, while our eyes are closed and, and uh, uh, we're in the presence of God, you say, Pastor, I want to be included on this ministry time today to get my heart sorted out. And if that's you, give me a wave. Let me see. <laughs>